Uh, Saima, I'll take you back to 1987. You were, it was a memorable game for India, not just because of Chetan Sharma's hat-trick, but you, of course, scored 100 there in that game. Uh, tell us, I know, you know, the bowler who picks up the hat-trick definitely enjoys it, but, uh, but what does it do to the team's morale? Because we'd want to understand what Virat Kohli and his, you know, rest of the team felt like when Kuldeep Yadav picked up those three wickets. If you could compare it to how you and your, you know, teammates felt when Chetan Sharma did it way back in 87. See, uh, centuries uh, are scored, wickets are taken, uh, but a hat-trick is very, very rare. And uh, that is the reason I think uh, Chetan Sharma's hat-trick uh, in that game was so memorable, so enjoyable. And I'm sure uh, in the Indian dressing room, uh, uh, Kuldeep Yadav's uh, hat-trick will have been celebrated uh, with great uh, uh, joy. In fact, on the field, uh, you saw how, the, how his teammates uh, reacted. Uh, and that's such a good sign because he's a young man, he's coming through. And he's doing well. He's very popular in the dressing room. You can see from uh, from the reception that he got from his teammates when he got to that third got that third wicket. And what a perfect delivery that was! Uh, the wrong one, which uh, unfortunately Pat Cummins didn't pick, and Dhoni took an excellent catch. Uh, so yes, I think uh, because it is such a rare uh, uh, deed uh, to get a hat trick, uh, it's a lot more celebrated than a century and uh, or even a five wicket. Five wickets also not very easy in one day cricket, but hat tricks in any form of the game are very rare indeed. All right, uh, Saimai, talk us through this particular hat-trick. Kuldeep Yadav, you must have seen it uh, up close, being in the commentary box there. You were at the stadium. You know, we heard Kuldeep Yadav a short while ago and, and he said, I went to MS Dhoni and asked him what to do in that hat-trick ball and uh, he said, Dhoni Bhai told me, you know, do whatever you think is right. I mean, someone like Dhoni who has an answer for most things didn't have an answer for this one. Obviously, these were tense moments and then Kuldeep Yadav decides to bowl that wrong one. How gutsy was it of, of Kuldeep to do that? And how did you see the entire hat-trick pan out? Well, yes, I think, you know, because MST probably didn't want to burden him with saying bowl this particular ball because that might have actually uh, put a lot more pressure. Uh, this way, I think uh, he let the young man come through. And that's what, that's what cricket is all about. You guide the players occasionally, but when the big moments come, you want them to do it themselves so that they get the confidence that they've done it. And they know, of course, they've got support from the teammates. And I think that is also the greatness of MST, that he allowed the young man to think for himself. Uh, but look at look at look at the way he bowled. I think that uh, uh, the delivery to uh, Matthew Wade. Now Matthew Wade can be a dangerous player, but uh, he was playing for the turn. The ball bounced a little bit more, so the inside edge onto the stumps. Then he pitches it further up uh, to Ashton Agar, the left-hander, and gets him out LBW. And then the third one. I think that was the peach of the delivery. That was really the delivery, as they say, creme de la creme. That was it because the wrong one, back of the hand. Not easy to bowl. You're bowling that as a hat-trick ball. What does it tell you of the young man's young man? His confidence, his belief in himself. It tells you how much he felt that that was what was going to get him a wicket. And he got it. So I think uh, uh, really, really fantastic uh, to see, to actually be there when he took the hat-trick. I was doing commentary at that stage. It's tough, uh, absolutely tough on the Aussies. But brilliant for the Indians. Okay, uh, let's talk about the spin twins now, Sanibai. Not just Yadav, but Chahal, who's been doing well. I think between the two of them, they've already picked up 10 wickets in just the two ODIs. Uh, we've seen foreign teams, whenever they come to India, they struggle against spin. But this time around, and I know it's just two ODIs, but uh, the Aussies have looked completely clueless. You know, uh, the common joke in and around when, when a lot of friends are watching, they all know that no matter what situation the game is in, they know that as soon as a Yadav or a Chahal comes, Australia is going to struggle. So that's the situation that the Aussies find themselves in at the moment. What do you put, put it down to? Do you think, I mean, these two spinners are uh, so much better than the uh, spinners that they were facing up until this time? Or do you think this current bunch of Aussies are completely clueless? I mean, or, or they're lacking in technique to do dealing with spinners. What do you think is the main reason why they're looking so clueless there? Well, I think firstly, we've got to give credit to the uh, two young bowlers for the way they're bowling, the confidence that they have, the big hearts that they've shown. Uh, remember, Kuldeep Yadav was taken for a couple of sixes by Glenn Maxwell. And I think Virat Kohli did the smart thing by giving him a little time, uh, uh, took him off uh, because gave him some time to reflect on what line he'd bowled and what he should be doing. And sometimes, you know, when a young bowler is under the cosh, it always is good to make, to make sure that his confidence is not shattered by giving him a break. That's, what, that's again, good captaincy by uh, Virat Kohli in, in uh, doing that. But I think the Australians are a quality batsman short. Uh, I think they will be hoping that Aaron Finch gets uh, fit for the game uh, on, uh, on Sunday. 
because uh, he's got experience. He's, he, he and David Warner make a destructive opening pair. At the moment, they're just not getting a start. You need to get a start. Uh, with Hilton Cartwright making his uh, debut in the Chennai game uh, and not coming good in both these games, I think the pressure is on the Australians at the start of the innings. Uh, so uh, I think they need to look at uh, uh, strengthening their uh, batting. They strengthened their bowling today by bringing in Kane Richardson and uh, Ashton Agar. And uh, they restricted the Indians. Uh, they, they were taking wickets in, in the middle overs. So I think they need to look at their batting now. And uh, uh, the batting otherwise is over-reliant on David Warner and Steve Smith. If Aaron Finch comes in, if he's fully fit, comes in, I think he'll make a difference. Okay, uh, Saimai, we spoke about the spinners. Of course, the Indian fast bowlers did really well. I mean, how often do you see an Indian, uh, you know, seam bowler bowling like a Bhuvneshwar? There were about three slips there. Uh, apart from them bowling well, do you think the conditions also really helped them? And, and did you think Virat Kohli got it absolutely right at the toss? Usually, we've seen him win toss and chase, but this time he decided to bat first. Probably, do you think it has something to do with the last time Virat batted here? I think it was an IPL game. They were chasing, the ball was doing all sorts of things, and RCB was all out for 48. You know, all those things going in his mind, and do you think he read the conditions really well today? Well, I think it was a bit of a risk at batting first for the simple reason that the ball starts to swing uh, uh, towards uh, the, say, th 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, uh, uh, when it's, uh, you know, uh, dusk time in, in uh, Kolkata. Uh, but I think he took the risk because he, he knew that uh, uh, towards the end, it might be a bit of a pressure point uh, for the for the Australians with a, ki with a kind of sort of batting fragility that they have if Smith and Warner fail. So I think he took a calculated risk in batting first. Uh, I would imagine in, uh, in situations where uh, uh, the Duckworth-Lewis method might come into play, it's always better to, uh, to bat second. But uh, Virat's got uh, a tremendous balanced bowling attack, so it really doesn't matter whether he bats first or whether, whether India is uh, uh, chasing. Okay, we've been talking about throughout this discussion only the Indian bowlers, of course, because they perform so well, uh, be it the spinners and the fast bowler. But let's talk about the man of the match. That happens to be Virat Kohli. You know, we often celebrate hundreds. But looking at the way the pitch was behaving and both <coughs> captains acknowledged that after the game that the pitch wasn't an easy one to bat on. Keeping that in mind, Virat's 92, uh, almost a runner ball. How crucial was that? Very good innings, absolutely terrific. There were a couple of shots that he played when the ball bounced a little bit more than anticipated. It just showed, uh, you know, the class of the man because, you know, the way he made that late adjustment and because uh, the ball was coming at good speed as well and bouncing and the way he played some of the shots actually tells you that uh, never mind if he hasn't scored runs in the, in the previous couple of games, uh, class will always tell in the end. And his batting, his partnership with Ajink Rane, that was needed at that stage. India had lost uh, the prolific uh, Rohit Sharma early and so they needed uh, to, to study the innings. Uh, the Australians, uh, having introduced Kane Richardson in the team, uh, had, had a good backup to their uh, opening bowlers, Coulton Isle and uh, Cummins. And uh, yes, it wasn't an easy pitch to bat on because the ball, it, it again, was a bit of a two-paced pitch. Uh, some deliveries were bouncing a little bit more, some deliveries moving sharply. So I think uh, all the batsmen who got half centuries deserve credit for that because uh, they really had to bat well to get uh, to those half centuries.